Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a, another trust problem. Uh, one of the final trust problems I'll be covering for the next little bit. But this problem is going to be talking about a method called the method of sections. Uh, it's also called the cutting method. And pretty much it is just a way of isolating members inside of a truss so that you can solve for individual members efficiently rather than solving the entire truss using method of joints. So it's a very simple method compared to method of joints, I think. Uh, and we'll quickly see why because it's very similar to what we've done before with uh, rigid uh, rigid bodies in equilibrium. Uh, and if you need a recall of that, you can take a look at the top right. But for now, let's just talk about this problem and see what we're dealing with, okay? So determine the force in members EC, EF, and FC of the bridge truss and state if these members are in tension or compression. So where do we start with a problem like this? Well, let's identify the members that we're looking for. So we have a member here, we have a member here and a member here. So these three members kind of triangulate here and we're looking to find an efficient way to solve for these members. Well, from the jump, we can see that if we take a cut kind of across like this, we can kind of isolate the internal forces of the member BC, FC, and FE. Kind of cut these open and see what the internal forces are inside of each of these members. But you may be asking yourself, why does this even work in the first place? Why can I just cut my truss in any place and say that it works? Well, the method of sections actually assumes that since the entire structure is in equilibrium, then that means any segment that we take should also be in equilibrium as well. Okay? So let's do a quick uh, little drawing of a member here just to kind of prove our point. So let's say we had a member. We have a joint here and a joint here. And let's say this member is in tension or uh, compression, let's say. We have a pushing force against these joints. But we take a cut, let's say, in the center of this member. What does that mean for our member now? We have two separated members like this. We still have these compressive forces at these joints. But now how do we make sure that these members are in equilibrium? Because now we have a force opposing in each direction of this member, but there's no way to counteract it in these two separate members now. So that means on the opposite side, we also have to show that it's in compression as well. Because this internal force goes through the entire member originally. So when we split it in two, we can assume that this compressive force is going to be acting all the way across it for both members now. Okay? So that's pretty much the gist behind the um, method of sections. So each section we take has to stay in equilibrium, either tension or compression, at the cut. So we're really thinking of this as exposing the internal forces that we have in the member already and just determining what would satisfy equilibrium, whether it be one member or two members with a cut. All right. So what are the tricks to understanding method of sections? Well, the first trick is going to be that we do not exceed more than three members when we're cutting. So no more than three members when cutting. Why is that? Well, I explained earlier that this problem is kind of related to solving equilibrium rigid body problems. And when we're solving for equilibrium of a rigid body, in a truss, it is a very similar situation where we're using our equilibrium equations, right? So we have summation of forces at x is equal to 0, summation of forces at y equals 0, and the summation of moment is equal to 0. So three equations. That means if we had three unknowns, we would have to cut three members. Two unknowns would be two members, and we'd be easily able to solve for problems like that. And the second trick to solving using a method of cut or method of sections would be to pick the side that is simpler to solve for. So let's say we had two external forces on this side and only one on this side. We would take the cut and solve for this half of the truss where there's only one external force. Why is that? Because we want to keep it as simple as possible, especially for our moment equation where we have only one external force that's going to be uh, kind of responsible for the overall moment of the structure, right? 
So solve simpler side. Now the first thing we need to do before we get into any cutting problem is going to be solving for our reactions. Okay, but we only need to solve for one really, and I'll show you why. See, we have Fe, Ec, and Cf that are the members that we're looking for, right? So that means I want to take this side of the problem because all of my members are still intact on this side, right? So I need the reaction at D because it's going to play an important role when I'm solving for the Fy and the moment uh, to have equilibrium at that cut. Okay, so if we take the moment at A, we can actually solve for the moment or the reaction at D. Okay, so moment at A will equal zero. And this is just very simple stuff that we've done before that I hope you remember. We have negative 600 because it's going clockwise 10 feet away from support A minus the 800 as well, which is 18 feet away. And we have the reaction dy, which is going to be assumed in the opposite direction, and that's going to be 28 feet away. And solving this, we're going to be left with dy equal to 728.6 pounds. Now let's clean up this problem and see what this cut is actually doing to our structure and what we can actually see when we take this cut. Okay, so now you can see what the internal forces are actually doing at our cut. They're actually similar to what we've done before with method of joints, except now we're just simply taking a cut through these members and exposing what these internal forces were doing in the first place. Now, an important thing to remember with the, the cut is that the internal forces are gonna follow the line of action or the geometry of each member. So you can see the force of CF is following that member uh, exactly along the line of action. And same with CB, uh, same with EF, right? So that means we're going to need to find this theta soon so that we can actually get the components for this CF force. Um, another point that's actually good to know is what is this force actually representing? Is it representing tension? Is it representing compression? Because I see it pointing to this joint, but it's coming from this joint. Well, the way I like to think of it is we have retained this side of the structure, right? These joints, B and F, are imaginary right now. They are just pointing to where those joints would have been if the structure was still there. But since we're dealing with this side of the structure, these joints are the ones that we're going to use to diagnose whether our forces are in tension or compression, okay? So since this force is pointing towards E, that means EF is actually going to be in compression or assumed compression. And then CF, since it's pulling away from that joint, is going to be assumed in tension at first, okay? So now that that's out of the way, that's pretty much all the tricks to solving by method of cut. So now we can actually go ahead and solve this problem. What are we gonna do though? We have three unknowns. How can I solve for an unknown here? Well, if we take the moment at C, we know that CF and CB are acting directly along uh, the, the the point of moment, right? So that means no moment will actually be produced by CB or CF. So we can actually solve for EF here using moment at C. So let's start there. We'll take the moment at C equal to zero, and we'll take our convention again, and we will go ahead and solve as normal. So the first force I'll look at is the reaction dy first, 728.6, and that is going upwards counterclockwise, so that means it's going to be positive with respect to C, of course. And how far is that? That is 10 feet away from that point. Next, we can look at Fe, which is going in the opposite direction, so we use a negative sign. So we use FEF, and we are going to be multiplying that by 10, because it's also 10 feet away from that point C, right? Now we can actually go ahead and solve for EF. And it is going to give us 728.6 pounds. And like we said, EF is pointing towards that joint at E. So we know that it is compression because it's pushing that joint. So now we have one of the unknowns solved for. That's one X component out of the way. But we still have two X components here. So the next step we have to do is actually solve for this Y component in the FCF, right? Because that's the only unknown Y that we have. So we can go ahead 
and solve as we normally would and take f c f but we need the component of y so it's going to be the adjacent side to this angle so we're going to be taking the cosine of theta and then we're also going to be looking at the negative 800 force that's going down and the positive 728.6 that we saw for earlier what is our theta it is going to be the tan inverse of the opposite which is 4 over the adjacent which is 10 and that is going to give you an angle of 21.8 degrees so you plug that back into this equation and you solve for fcf and you'll be left with 76.9 pounds and the sign is positive which means our assumption is correct which also means that this will be in tension because we are pulling away from that C joint that is still existing on the side of our cut. All right, so that's two of our forces solved for now. But the question was asking for this one as well, EC. So that means we're actually gonna have to do a method of joints, unfortunately, to solve for this last force, okay? But this should be easy recall for everybody, I would hope, if you watched my previous video. Uh, another shameless plug, I'm sorry about that, but a boy's got to eat, you know what I mean? So we have the free body diagram at joint E looking something like this. And this will be 728.6, like we solved for earlier. In compression, right, we're pointing to that joint E. And we're going to be solving for FED and FEC. The first one we solve for is FED. Why? Because there's only one X component, and that is where we need to start. How did I know this was 45 degrees? You may be asking. 10, 10, 10 inverse of 10 over 10 is going to be 45 degrees. I'm not a trigonometry expert, but that seems right to me. Um, we solve for FED using an equation like so. We're taking that X component of this FED. And then we're moving on to also consider the positive 728.6 because our convention, remember, is just like it was before with to the right being positive. Solving for FED, we are left with 1030.4 pounds. And that's compression, right? We're pushing that joint. And then solving for FY, it's going to be a little tight but I can hopefully squeeze it in. We have negative FEC because it's going downwards. Then we have that positive Y component of FED, and we're taking the cosine based on this angle. But it doesn't matter, sine or cosine, the 45, it will be the same. And then solving for that FEC will equal 728.6 pounds in tension which will be the last force you need to solve for and your three final answers. So I know this method seems tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it and know all the tricks, it shouldn't be too bad moving forward. Okay, I hope this helped. Uh, let me know if you have any questions below. Thanks.